A few weeks ago, I bought this old Hardage lathe that's been retrofitted with the CNC controller and some clear path motors. It came with a full set of collets, a, a pneumatic collet uh, clamp, and it is a gang tool lathe, so the, the tools uh, come in from this angle here. And it has this uh, uh, carriage on here called an AccuSlide. And it, it has an, a one horsepower motor, but that's been decommissioned. And this uh, clear path motor was used for the spindle motor itself. It works out that this choice of motor here was uh, dramatically underpowered. So it would turn plastic, but that's about all it would do. So I wanted to buy an, a larger motor for the spindle. And I'll go ahead and show you what I ended up doing. At the end of the year, I bought this Einstar 3D scanner with 0.5 millimeter resolution. And our first scan was uh, fish. And this worked out pretty well. So I took the scanner out into the shop. And I scanned the back of the lathe for to get as much detail as I could to make a new motor mount. And it took about an hour for me to learn the software and to create a model that looked pretty good. And so I was ready to import that into Fusion 360. And I found this video from Matt at Learn Everything About Design where he takes an OBJ file that came out of uh, the Einstar software and actually imports it into Fusion 360 and creates this model from there. So I'm over in Fusion 360 and I've imported the uh, OBJ file from the Xter software. And I'll go ahead and move it around here so you can kind of see what it looks like. It's not a closed model, so it's a bunch of just different surfaces. And um, it's 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 fairly responsive, but that's because I have a you know a graphics card that can handle this this many facets. In fact, let's take a look at what how what the facet count is. This is this is the OBJ file that came right out of the software. So we'll open up this properties tab. If we come over here to the mesh area. You see that it's got 7.2 million uh, facets. So it's fairly large. Now, um, over at Matt, at Learn Everything About Design said to go ahead and delete all the uh, facets and triangles you don't want. So I came over in the sheet metal, uh, not sheet metal, in the mesh tab, and I just started deleting millions and millions of these things. So what I was left with was this over here. And so this is my working file. This is my first project trying to do something with 3D scan. And the approach that I took was I wanted to do an L bracket. If we look at it from the left hand side, I want to do an L bracket here and have this motor mount up in this area. And you can kind of see where the, I left enough of the old motor and the old pulley there to kind of get a reference of where it actually is in 3D space. So what I first needed to do was I needed to put a sketch on this plane, which is this, these, this two mounting points on the back side of the motor. And so I basically came in and created a, a, uh, a sketch using, uh, or created an offset plane using three points off of three of this, three of these, uh, to these two surfaces. And I created a sketch on that offset plane. And then I used that technique that is shown over in, um, that Matt showed in his video of offsetting the sketch down and then getting the geometry out from these holes. And then I, I um, actually measured these up. And so uh, this was the first sketch that I did. And I decided that in order to actually make sure that I got the motor placement right, along with the pulley and all that, I needed to do a, uh, uh, a, a test a test cut so the first so what i ended up doing was um i ended up making a little test frame that i cut out of hardboard and it kind of looked like this and we just kind of held the motor up in place with the pulley on it and kind of saw that the alignment was good and that helped me uh that gave us assurance that these slots were in the right place because we can't move the motor right and left and i ended up picking these these to be holes in here and I, and in hindsight these really should have been slots so I could move the the entire bracket right and left and then these slots will let me uh, move the motor out and back to adjust the tension but it turns out we we, we uh, were able to get the alignment to work right so that that worked fine
And after we got the alignment checked out, I went ahead and worked on a sheet metal bracket that looks like this. Here, let me turn off some of these sketches here. So here's the sheet metal bracket that I worked on, and it has a support a support uh, um, brace here because the optical encoder um, that's hooked onto the spindle motor of the spindle itself is is this little board here, and it needed a couple it needed a mount point so that that thing could mount back onto something. So I'll go ahead and turn on all the components over here, including the motor. The, the hub for the for the pulley and the actual pulley itself. And if, if we come back and look at the side here, you can kind of see here's where the old motor was right here. And then the new motor is over here, so we can't use the same belt. So we needed to be able to determine what the belt length was. So we, we, we uh, projected some of these. Actually, we just created a sketch on the right, on the, on a plane and I drew a, a circle about the size of the the entire motor, knowing that the this spindle was actually in the center of this outside housing, which is this, this circle here. And then over here, we got I drew this circle uh, kind of in the right spot, and we looked at the distance between these two circles from the center of their from the center of their origin. And that distance is 8.8, 8.4. And that told us what length of belt we needed to buy. So this is the work that I did in Fusion 360. And we'll go back over and I'll show you how I made this bracket. So like I said, we're, we made the test uh, fitting bracket out of hardboard. And we test fit everything and it looked pretty good. With this uh, bracket was made with finger joints. And we verified all the all the spacing of everything before we actually fabricated it. I super glued it all together. We kind of held the motor up there and saw that we we're going to get good alignment from right to left. And making this this first thing out of hardboard uh, resulted in about six changes to my design before I made the sheet metal component. I was able to reuse the the pulley itself, but the the uh, Shaft diameters on the motors were different. The clear path had a half inch, and this two horsepower motor had five eighths inch. So I grabbed a CAD file off of McMaster and I actually just 3D printed it, and that worked out pretty well. Um, I ended up buying one, but for our test fit, the 3D printed part worked pretty well. I bought this two horsepower motor off of eBay. And you can kind of see the specs here. It runs up at 3,400 RPM. And in comparison to the clear path motor, it's significantly larger. It weighs about 45 pounds. Here I'm using my Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro plasma table to cut out um, my flat design from a sheet metal component. And this is a 10 gauge cold rolled steel. And uh, this the cut was beautiful. There's very little dross on the back and a little bit of cleanup. I took it to my Swag Off-Road press brake bender and I bent this, these angles up. And then I mounted it on the back of the lathe and everything looked great. We ended up test fitting everything. And here's the side bracket I put in to add a little bit of rigidity to that. And I bought a, a three-phase VFD that runs at 220 volts from Viver. And I ended up mounting that and a little uh, pneumatic manifold on the back to control things. And it was looking all pretty good. We ran it up. We spun it up to 2,000 RPM. And it all looked fine. So I powder coated it using some uh, pastel blue. It kind of matched up with the same genre of the lathe. And was able to fit everything back in. And you can kind of see the final design here. Uh, looks pretty good. It's ready to go, and here we am cutting some parts on the lathe itself. I just had a little piece of plastic, probably some ABS or something, that I just put in the spindle. And I'm not a lathe operator. In fact, I know very little about a lathe, but I'm looking forward to learning how to use this hardage with a CNC controller.
and a new motor that can spin this lathe up to 3,000 RPM that has enough power to go ahead and cut aluminum and steel. Thanks for watching.